Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Hi. Sup. I wish I had like something I could start my videos with. I wish I had an introduction that I could go to to start these videos because for the most part I sit here just kind of looking stunned for the first five minutes of trying to film something. I'm trying to think of something original to come up with that hasn't been used in any any YouTube video which is absolutely impossible. So for the most part I end up saying hello everybody or hi everyone or something along those lines and if that's okay with you I'm probably gonna keep doing that because I don't know what else to say that is original because that's the least original thing I can possibly think of. So hi everyone. <laughs> so if you think of something that I should open up any any video a vlog versus an informative video I don't know just let me know because I'm struggling. Today is a vlog style video. I like doing the vlogs or the, whatever these videos are um, a lot because it kind of helps me vent my frustrations and helps me connect with you guys who are also struggling with the same kind of thoughts and ideas and whatevers. I just have this thought I've been thinking for a long time. Um, and I've kind of said it before and if you haven't already read the title or the thumbnail then you probably I uh, have no clue what, a click, what you're watching, but essentially I just want to talk about why bedwetting is so gosh darn confusing. <laughs> For me in particular, raise your hand, raise it now, well raise it after I pose the question, but raise your hand if you have bedwetting and overactive bladder. Did you raise it? Because I don't know if it's just me. It can't possibly be. They're not... 100% connected. You can have bedwetting without overactive bladder and overactive bladder without bedwetting. Like, it's just a thing. You can, you can do that. <laughs> if you choose to do that, you can do that. I get overactive bladder. I get it. Somewhat. It makes a little bit more sense. For some people, your bladder is just a little bit more sensitive to things like, for me, I'm learning as I go throughout my life, but I'm learning that carbonated drinks make me have a crazy overactive bladder. Like, what from one, like, level, like, meh, five or six to, like, level 100. <laughs> um, on a regular day, overactive bladder is not too, too big of a deal, but as soon as I start to drink something carbonated, I am, my frequency goes way up, and the urgency, too. Like, it's uh, crazy. I just started realizing that about a, f a month or two ago, and I've been kind of, like, testing it to see how much so. Um, and yeah, I, I still sometimes, I don't drink carbonated drinks very often, but I do occasionally, and even then, it's really not a good idea on a road trip. <laughs> so I'll drink it at home, but I'm just like going to the bathroom like every 5-10 minutes sometimes. So it ramps it way up for me, so, but in general, like, the carbonation can do that to some people, or it can help it irritate your bladder, but I just, I'm so sensitive to it. Um, which you'd think I'd notice that, but I really am not a very big uh, pop or carbonation, like, I don't, that doesn't, like, I don't want carbonated drinks very often, but sometimes I do. But anyways, that was a long story. <laughs> but overactive bladder makes some more sense to me than, um, just a bed wetting or wetting the bed as an adult. Um, there's a lot of reasons that your bladder can show overactive symptoms, like urgency, frequency, um, and nocturia, even just, that alone is not wetting the bed. That is just you having to get up all the time in the middle of the night to go to the washroom. So nocturnal and uresis, on the other hand, is when you do wet the bed and you don't wake up to go to the bathroom. So why I'm confused is this just internal struggle every single day. It doesn't always bubble up to the surface as it is right now. <laughs> Uh, carbonation. <laughs> Anyways, um, it doesn't always like bother me, but recently, like this past week or two, it has. It's just the idea that 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 it, I have both, and they don't exactly coincide with each other. But why do I have both? Why don't they make sense together? Or maybe they do. Maybe I'm just an idiot. But I don't get it. And I'll tell you why. Because Reese, the past couple weeks. Um, as you may know, I've been testing out a CPAP machine or an AP, APAP machine um, for my, well, not necessarily my sleep apnea because it's very, very mild, like it's to the point where it doesn't need to be really treated. Um, but I'm being, I'm using it for um, bedwetting alone because there is proof that 
having a, well, going through any stages of sleep apnea, you end up producing more things like urine in when you go into like a fight or flight stage in your sleep. Um, I don't know why, that's just the way it is. Look it up if you have any more questions because I just am just kind of spitting out what I hear from doctors. So I've been testing that out recently and a lot of people have been asking me if it's working. Um, it's complicated because, <laughs> this is why I'm making this video, it's complicated. I will be doing another video update on the sleep hat machine because I did get two new masks and I replaced the old ones. Um, we went back and exchanged them, but that's a different video. I'll be doing that probably in a week or two. I'm not really sure. I haven't really put it together. However, the reason why I don't know if it's working is because I can't keep it on my face. <laughs> I wake up in the middle of the night and I take it off because I get really claustrophobic. and. At first I don't feel claustrophobic if it feels fine. As the night goes on, for some reason I get a little bit more irritated by it and I feel like it's getting annoying. And so like I'll be half asleep and I'll take it off. Like I'm not all of a sudden like I'm awake. I'm going to cognitively take this off and go back to sleep. Usually it's like I'm barely awake and I'm just like <laughs> I rip it off my face. Um, but I will go into more detail about that and the new masks I've got and the design of them and everything which I think is going to be better. Because I can't keep them on all night, it's confusing because sometimes, or ever since this has started, or I've started wearing them, I've noticed that I don't have the worst episodes of bedwetting at night. They're not great, but they're definitely not as bad, if you know what I mean. Um, but that's weird because I'm not keeping them on the entire night. Like, I haven't slept through the whole night with one. I think the longest I've had one of the masks on was three hours for the night. I think that was the longest. It might have been three and a half to four. Um, but yeah, like, it was... It's just been, like, a, like I don't know if I could have worse sleep apnea in the very beginning of sleeping, and then that's why... Um, which is, doesn't make sense to me, and this whole video won't make sense, I promise you. <laughs> it will not make sense. But... Um, like when I fall asleep, I can sleep and have a nap and not wet the bed. Like I can have like a legit one to two hour nap and I'll be asleep or maybe even three and I still won't wet the bed. So it's confusing to me why when I put the mask on and I go sleep, <laughs> I go sleep <laughs> and when I fall asleep, I keep it on for an hour and a hour and a half, two hours, um, and take it off. That when I wake up and the whole like after the whole night's over, I've had a, a lesser um, wet neighbor, and it's weird to me. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I don't get uh, bedwetting. The other reason is that sometimes if you don't wear any protection whatsoever, you don't wet the bed at all. But that doesn't happen all the time. So. Sometimes I'll just be like, I don't feel like putting any protection on tonight, and I don't, because I just, it's like, I have the worst habits, <laughs> and just the worst, and it doesn't sound bad, but like, I am such a procrastinator, like, whoo, so procrastinating, procrastinating isn't a word, it is now, and that's me. I procrastinate all the time, and it's only about stupid, small, like, teensy tiny things and I don't I just I'm like I don't want to do it right now <laughs> and it's it's just just so stupid and I hate it I hate being a procrastinator but I'm trying to I'm trying to force myself to do things to make it feel like the little things are easier to do but you guys are gonna be mad at me <laughs> If it can help me, I probably won't do it. And I'm like the, like, I'm telling you to do these things and like, go see your doctor and do all these things in the meantime. I'm trying my best and I still can't do them. So one of the things I don't do <laughs> is, this I don't know what it comes down to, but sometimes I don't take my medication even though it's right beside me at my bedside table, just waiting to be taken. And I'm like, nah, too lazy, can't do it. <laughs> and. It could benefit me. Um, I actually am going to, I've made it up, don't freak out too much because I am going to go see my doctor and see if she can uh, re-prescribe these medications because it's been a while. Anyways, that's just a side note. But the other thing I hate doing is I hate getting ready for bed. I wish I could just dive into bed and be like, sleepy time, bye, and get on with my night because that'd be wonderful. 
but unfortunately I can't do that. One of my nightly rituals is lying on my bed, like whoosh, lying, like, you know, horizontal, just like lying down, not going to sleep, watching TV, browsing Facebook, whatever, lying down like this. You got it? I don't like getting up after that. <laughs> And that means because because I've gotten to that like lie down position, I can't like mm, get up because I just want to stay in that position and go to sleep. But if I have to get up and turn off the lights and like close my door or something and then put on an adult diaper or even just take my medication, like I do the littlest amount of work possible and it still feels like it's a lot of work. I hate doing that. I procrastinate up to like half an hour sometimes, like every night, every single night, in order to like will myself to get out of bed and like do the things I need to do. And now I've added another thing in putting on a CPAP mask or a, or one of these masks for sleeping in so I could breathe better. <sighs> so that's one of my nightly rituals and that takes forever. And then my daily ritual is waking up and getting out of bed. It's just, I'm the worst. I can't describe it any other way. I'm just the worst. Anyway, where was I going with that? <laughs> it turned into a really long, long rant. I'm so sorry. My point is, even though sometimes I don't put a diaper on before bed, I will go to bed just normally and I'll wake up dry. Why? 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 I don't know. I hate it. But you want to know why I hate it? Because it's not consistent. I wish it was consistent. If you go to my homepage on YouTube, in the top left hand, I think this is the right side. In the top left hand corner, there's a little bar that shows a bunch of like links to things like my Facebook, my Instagram, um, my adult, or my, uh, my subreddit and stuff like that. But the first link, I think it is the first link, it says my story. And if you click on that, it's because it's for New Life Outlook because that's the other job I do online with regards to overactive bladder. But if you click on that, you'll kind of read like through my story that I've written for uh, my author page on New Life Outlook. And like the first thing I think I basically say is, throughout my life I've never known any kind of consistency. <laughs> or if you even just type in oab.newlifeoutlook.com, my big old face will be right on their homepage. And it just, and it just says, through all this time, one thing has remained the same, wetting the bed and overactive bladder. And then I just talk about how it's just been my whole life and I've changed everything about me almost. The only thing I don't think I've changed is, uh, well no, I've changed my diet. Like I've changed literally everything I can think of. I've gone up and weighed, I've, 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 if you even watch my Draw My Life video I did about a year ago, um, if you watch that, like you'll, you'll see that like, yes, I have changed, like I've moved, I've had different types of traumas, I've broken my back, I've, like I said, lost and gained lots of weight. I used to be 175 pounds when I was in high school and I still wet the bed. Like, that's very late for me. Like, I'll show pictures. Like, I was really, really skinny. And um, I've never gotten back to that. But like, I've done, like, I've changed my diet. I've dr I've changed the way I drink things. Like, I've not drink, I drink more water now and I don't drink as much like, carbonation or I drink a lot of coffee but I have to, and coffee doesn't irritate my bladder the same way carbonation does. I can, I've gotten used to drinking coffee now, but I didn't used to drink coffee. I started drinking coffee when I was like 17 or 18. So many things have changed, and my, my, my wetting the bed doesn't make any sense. I just wish it did. I wish I could say, ah, here is why it makes sense, and this is why you didn't wet the bed last night. And I don't get it. I just don't get it, and it bugs me so much, <laughs> and it probably shouldn't. Another thing that bugs me is some, like, I'll talk about how alcohol can make you uh, have a over, more of a bladder and be more irritated by it. And I've no, I know I've gone to bed after drinking a lot of alcohol, like, when I was younger, I think, more like in my party days, if you will. I wasn't that big of a partier, but... But I'd drink alcohol and I'd go to bed and not wet the bed. But then I'd have a regular day and then I'd wet the bed. Like it just, it hurts my brain. It hurts my brain. And yeah, I don't, so raise your hand if you have overactive bladder and wet the bed and have all these problems too, because I don't get it. <laughs> I just truly don't get it. I think that's why it's so hard to diagnose it properly and to find the right solution is because so many things don't make sense. Um, 
and it doesn't look like a normal diagnosis. Like it's not like a, a textbook diagnosis for wetting the bed. And that's why so many medications don't work for me and that's why so many treatments don't work for me. And it doesn't, I wish it did. I really wish the Botox injection in the bladder worked. Um, I'm thinking soon I might be trying that again, but I really liked the fact that you only had to do that every six months or six to nine months. Um, and it's a physical fix, like you're changing the physical bladder structure of the wall, it's not as sensitive, it works for a lot of people. Um, that would have been great because it's, it's, not as, it's not as traumatic to go through that, um, or the, how I went through it, it was. And if you're interested in learning a bit more about that, I keep thinking I'm going to make a bit video about uh, Botox in the bladder. Um, it's on my mind, I keep thinking I'm going to do it, I'm just not sure um, when I'm going to do it. <laughs> To like the whole procedure and walking you through it and why it's important, but that would have been awesome if it worked. And even just having the interstim work after going through two surgeries of having interstim, like that would have been nice if that physical change and like the stimulation on my sacral nerves. If I ever get it right one day, I'll, that'll be the best day of my life. But I just so far haven't gotten it right. And I know I've heard a lot of you say the same thing out there, and it gives me some sort of like hope that or consolation that yeah you guys also have the same problems it went really well with your trial and not so well with your actual implant so I don't know just I'm just annoyed if you can't tell just a little bit complainy <laughs> next Tuesday I see my regular <laughs> say in-house doctor <laughs> my regular Ottawa doctor um, on Tuesday so that's gonna be interesting I don't know I never know what to say, and I never know what we talked about, and I really have no idea what's going on anymore these days. I just go to doctors, and I'm the one making the appointments. I still just go, and then I'm just like, these are the things that are happening, and then he'll be like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so that was a lot. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry if I brought you down. This is more like a, a semi-serious video, because I can't take anything seriously. <laughs> um, but I hope you watched it and got through it and enjoyed, and if you have an idea for an intro, um, that'd be great. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep looking at my camera, like, stunned. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for caring this far with me. Um, I'll keep you posted. Um, if you don't already follow me on Instagram, please do. It's like, it's my favorite platform. I love Instagram. I especially love my Instagram stories. I'm literally putting my hands under my stomach fat right now to warm them up. <laughs> Does anyone do that? Or do you stick them in your armpits? I've always told me to stick them in my armpits, but no, I want to stick them under my fat <laughs> or sit, sit on them. But this seems to be a little bit more awkward and uncomfortable for people, so I'm going to keep doing that. Anyways, I hope you all have a great day, a great week, and a great weekend if you're watching this on a weekend or an evening. Stay happy, stay healthy, and stay dry. I'm going to go now and just think about everything. That's a huge bird. Sorry! <laughs> I don't even know what it is. What are you? Hold on. I'm going to show you what I'm looking at. Do you see that? There's two of them. There's one on the other side. What are they doing? That's not a tree, sir. That's a hydro pole. Man, I'm super janky. <laughs> I don't know where he went. Do you agree yes or no? Was that a huge bird? <laughs>